I had a couple of guitars that I used in the early going, but once I got this, this became my main guitar. This cool new guitar company is up on 48th Street. You should go check it out. They, they like your music. I think we had like a seven inch out at the time, Born Annoying and Rumble. Hadn't even put out Strap It On yet. And went up and met them and they were like really cool. And they let me look through a bunch of guitars and this is what I found. So this would have been 1989. So this was brand new, brand spanking new, beautiful guitar. I felt as an affront to the kind of punk rock aesthetic of New York at the time, the downtown cool kids, that it would be cool to have a guitar that was incredibly kind of metal. You know, it's fuchsia, had a reverse headstock and a Floyd Rose on it. And I also wanted an amazing sounding and playing instrument. So I played through probably about four or five guitars that they had just in boxes. You could tell acoustically that it was gonna be amazing. And here this guitar is from 1989 till 2018. So it's, it's, it's been around for a while. It's still my favorite rock instrument. I will, I'll be buried with this. The band started to do well and we played CBGBs. And so this guitar has been on the CBGB stage many, many times. We finally in 91, we started to make the Meantime record, which was the kind of record that put us on the map. We had made Strap It On already. The band kind of exploded. We had a really good live reputation in Europe and the US. So this was the main guitar on that record. Betty, the Betty album, came after that. This was the guitar and all the helmet riff songs like Tick and Wilma's Rainbow. And it was used on the Aftertaste record, obviously. You can find one of these. They're really, really good, amazing instruments. This guitar got smashed in Minneapolis First Avenue, which is the club Prince used to play in, and so I tried to chop down a monitor with it, and this big chunk came came off. It had to be put back together. My tech kept the pieces, and there's these wooden dowels that hold it together. I think there's three of them. There's one here, here, and here. Yeah, it kind of adds, obviously now it adds character to the guitar. The back, I've always taken the back plates off to, to be able to utilize the springs. This is something I learned from the German guitarist Kasper Brotzmann take the back plate off, you can get interesting sounds like on the, on the springs when you're amplifying it at 120 decibels. The spring was a gag. My tech did a really beautiful job working on the guitar because you know, I had spare springs for my whammy and he put this sp spring in here and I just liked it. I thought it was really cool and people have asked me about it. I'm like, oh, it's the built-in reverb, spring reverb unit in the guitar. I'm like, wow, that's really, really cool. It does nothing, it's just a spring. Tip is broken because it's sharp. I, I, um, I would jam it in the edge of the, the, the amp to kind of bend the neck and get cool feedback sounds. I love feedback and I love trying to control it and I've spent years trying to master ranges of feedback and ways to, to create tension and noise, which I'm fairly good at. Yeah, this, is, this will be on the current U.S. tour. Just a U.S. tour at this point, and then we're gonna to go to Europe and do festivals this summer. This particular tour is an idea that I had about five or six years ago. Tommy Victor from Prong who came to see Helmet in Dallas, and I said, man, we should tour together. Prong and Helmet should tour together. And Tommy Victor was doing front of house at CBGB's the night Helmet auditioned. Mike Kirkland, the bassist at the time from Prong, was doing the door. So we auditioned and they were like, book this band now. Because of Tommy and Mike, we Helmet got our start at CBs. Mm -hmm. 